Welcome to another episode of Brown Bagging It. Hope you have your lunch bag and you're ready for another lunch and learn time. Today we have a special guest. We'll introduce her in a little bit, but her name is Sarah Noel Black, and she oversees tiny marketing. It's a cool idea. We'll get to it in a moment because it's all about making a big impact for small businesses, which many of us in this day and age of boutique businesses really need. But first, we have to talk to my cohorts and find out what they brought in their sack lunch today. Hey guys, how you doing? Good afternoon. Hello, hello. Hi, Christine. Hi, CJ. Hello. hello. <laughs> so, Christine, I think today's topic, you know, the today's our fourth episode on persuasion, and it's our last episode, the final one. But today is on persuasion through reciprocity and i believe that was your idea to come up with this one so you want to kind of introduce the topic here a little bit sure well i i will backpedal a little bit just pointing out you know as leaders and communicators persuasion is such a key part of what we're doing in our businesses in our nonprofits, maybe at your church in projects and meetings even with our kids right we're always persuading someone to come to our side of, uh, or to go in the direction that we're hoping to go. And one of those techniques is reciprocity. So reciprocity is this exchanging of things with others for mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Marty, in my bag here, I have some sugar cookies. <laughs> ah. And like, maybe you'll trade some lunch with me. <laughs> Possibly. But, but let's you know. see, Christine, I would be more than happy to trade because you see, today I got a really tiny lunch bag. Oh, because of right. tiny marketing. I like there that. You go. <laughs> there you go. So today I am having, let me see if I can get it out. I'm, I'm having some chili. All right. <laughs> and, and I'm also having a little bag of donuts here. So, so you know, this is really nice. I, I must have done something really nice for my wife because she made me such a tiny little lunch. All right. <laughs> You spend some time on that. She's awesome. <laughs> Let's hope there's no hint of a small diet. <laughs> oh, That's another way to my, cut calories, right? There you go. There you go. I can still have that full lunch with almost zero calories. So, so guys, let's talk for a moment about reciprocity because, first of all, I think we need to understand that well before we can talk about the sure. persuasion of it. I mean, because, first of all, reciprocity – Tell me if I'm right or wrong here, but isn't that really making sure that both parties win? Isn't it an equal exchange? And the word persuasion suggests that maybe there's not always a two-way win. What are your thoughts? Well, I look at persuasion uh, in a more positive way. I look at persuasion as a nudging, a pushing in a certain direction. But if it's not going to be a win, a win-win, then it's got to stop. I love the idea of reciprocity, okay. the idea of uh, giving uh, of myself to someone else first to show uh, or establish some trust and then let them give back. But it's always got to be a win-win. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what we're seeking is a sweet spot between our positions, right? There's a, I want you to pay more, you want to pay less, and somewhere there's a sweet spot where we're both going to feel good about that. So. Um, I don't think it has. I agree with Marty. I don't think it's negative. I think these are tools to help people to come to the same way of thinking or in, you know, the sweet pot spot. Sometimes we miss it a little bit. It lands on one side or the other. And I think that's longevity of late relationships or ongoing relationships. Yeah, I, th I think you guys have a good point here, because a lot of times when I have reciprocity involved, it's not necessarily two equal things. You know, this one person brings an activity or this other person brings in knowledge or skill set. Uh, it doesn't have to be equal things, but you have to decide on that goal that you're both trying to get to. And can we bring it together in a way uh, where we're successful um, with that some sense of equality, I assume. Right. I saw a really cool example of reciprocity, I think. It, you guys tell me how this qualifies. I think it does. There was okay. a little store here that, um, because of the pandemic, they couldn't have people come in, and the it was a ceramic store. 
So they were used to having people come in and paint ceramics, but at for a portion of time, people couldn't come in there. Sure. So they yeah. teamed up. They actually sold um, to-go kits for the ceramics. But the reciprocity came in when they teamed up with another business and said, hey, we're going to sell your pizza kit along with our kit. So yeah. it was a mutual sort of thing because the you know they're selling for the other person and it's packing out their package it's making their package more full to go out the door so i think that was like a super clever reciprocity example of reciprocity yeah well thank you for sharing that with us you know i really like the fact that we're diving into this to figure it out the the key is understand that the word persuasion doesn't have to be negative as some people right. think it is uh, but instead, it could be moving both people towards something very positive. Uh, they just need a little nudge or a little more information or whatever it takes. Uh, and when you can use reciprocity as that final push to persuade them to where everyone succeeds or wins, uh, I think it's a successful thing. But I want to hear our special guest talk about that in just yeah, a so moment. Let's hear from the expert. That's right. That's why we bring them in. Exactly. <laughs> so today we're talking to Sarah Noel Black. She owns Tiny Marketing, which makes a big impact for small businesses. They do social media, digital marketing. And you know what? I don't know if they've officially won awards or not, but I will say that her customers have been well rewarded for her efforts. Please welcome Sarah Noel Black. Sarah, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you I'm for a, having me. I'm a big fan, so this whole idea of you being here is a treat for me. It's it's better than the treat I got in my lunch. <laughs> yes. Where did you get that? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm dying for a tiny tiny sandwich right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to dive into a few questions and see if we can't pick your brain. Uh, Marty, do you want to kick things off? Yeah. So, uh, Sarah, I love this whole idea that your entire uh, company is based on this reciprocity. You give so much. You are constantly putting out there. You're seeing all these. I see these videos, these great interviews and stuff like that. How uh, how do you judge what you have to give in order to get something back? How do you balance that? Um, I give away everything. I don't, oh, great. I don't have a restriction. I feel like as an expert in my field, it's important to be giving and serve, serve the public. And my way of doing that is to teach them how to solve their problems and in the way that, in the way that I do it best. So I give without stopping. I give as much as I can. And um, when it comes down to it, if you need me to actually service and do the job, that's that's when it stops. But as far as information and education, have it all. <laughs> so this is a little bit of a controversial thing on the Internet these days, because there's some groups out there saying, you know, don't give away everything. Just give enough to water their mouth so they know you're an expert and then hit them with a the bill. Right. You clearly don't have that approach. I, you know, talk to us as far as some examples of how maybe reciprocity works in your line of work. Yeah, I think that the fear of giving away too much really comes down to insecurity. Mm. Um, you know, if you feel comfortable and like you, you will drive value, then you shouldn't feel uncomfortable giving away the, the information that you have. Um, as far as marketing and how reciprocity works in a few different ways. I mean, basically it comes down to educating your ideal client on how to solve their problem. And hopefully that leads them to them wanting you to solve that problem because you've built trust. It's that tro uh, what like no trust factor. You build it through educating people and you could do that through partnerships like this one or I had a meeting earlier today with a uh, digital marketing company 
basically that's reciprocity. They want me to do a webinar with them and I connect with their audience who we share the same audience. We sell to the mm. same people. Yeah. Reciprocity right there. And then, awesome. you know, trying to reach your ideal client is the same way. All right. I, I like this and I agree with you. You've got to give away as much as you can because just watching your videos, I realize, wow, this person either knows everything or is connected to everything. When I work with somebody who just wants to give you a little bit and says, you know, you have to pay for more, I immediately build up a, a wall, a little bit of a defense. So I think you're successful. What do you, where, where do you think you've been the most successful? Can you give us an example of someone you kind of partnered with that you, sh you saw something skyrocket? Yeah, I would say building out my network of other contractors has been the most successful thing. So we help each other out just by educating each other and partnering up on webinars and live streams and podcasts, give each other that new audience and getting in front of them. But at the same time, you're building relationships and you're exchanging referrals. I might do something that they might not do. So building up relationships with contractors that share the same audience has been supreme. <laughs> okay, so since since you're involved in digital marketing and that whole social media thing, I, I got to ask you the question that seems like everyone wants to know. What's the secret behind SEO? <laughs> oh, it, you know, talking like a human is the secret behind SEO. Really, I would just pay attention to varying those keywords throughout your content, making sure that everything is accessible to to people like if you are doing a podcast or a live stream like this download the transcript so that's available to people that gives you the seo juice and it also makes it more accessible for people so that's always a good thing and then i love harrow help a reporter out for seo getting quoted in other publications and then they always give you a backlink for that which helps a lot that's another reciprocity thing. There you go. There we you like go. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, I learned about Harrow through uh, listening to you speak once before. And it's oh. amazing. Yes, yes. I Like I said, I've listened to you. Uh, and so how do you, how do you uh, manage all of this? Because you're all over the place. So you're doing more than just social media. You're actually helping businesses. So how do you balance your time? Uh, systems. Systems for, okay. for sure. Everything that I can automate, I do. And then I time block everything. So I work with my clients Monday through Thursday and time block what I need to do for them. And I batch everything. So if I'm writing content for an HVAC contractor, I do it all at the same time while I'm in their head already. And then I block off four hours every week to do my own marketing. So it's all about batching systems, automation. <laughs> Okay. See, I, I got to do that one a little bit better than I've been doing it. <laughs> but we're right now we want to take a, a brief break. Uh, we need to lighten the mood before we dive into a little bit more of a deeper discussion. So here's Marty with some humor. One day it was raining cats and dogs. I mean, it was really, really pouring. Paulie was driving around the mall parking lot looking for a spot to park. He kept saying to himself, I don't want to park too far away and run through the rain and get all wet. So he hesitated. He looked up in the sky and he said, Dear Lord, please help me this one time. Find me a spot close to the door so I won't get all wet. And in reciprocation, Lord, I will start going to church on Sundays. I'll stop drinking. I'll be a better father. I'll be a better husband. I will be a better man. At that very moment, a large clap of thunder. Ba boom The rain stopped. The clouds parted and the sun shined down in this one spot right next to the door. And miraculously, a parking spot appeared. Paulie quickly drove in there, stopped the car, looked up in the sky and said, never mind, God, I found one. <laughs> you know, I, I never know how to respond to <laughs> these giggle moments, but they do cause me to giggle, so I like it. <laughs> 
So anyway, um, Sarah, we want to just dive in a little bit more into your, your personal life, if you don't mind that. Uh, tell us how you got started. How, how, did, how did you become this queen of marketing, if you don't mind that term? Yeah, I don't mind that. <laughs> you can call me the queen of marketing. Um, all right, let's go back to the beginning of my sad days in my queue. Where, um, so I started working with like building these systems and automating and batching because I worked at a group of seven companies, but it was a single group and I was a one person marketing department. And I felt like I was constantly being set up to fail. I wasn't going to succeed the way things were because I had a million people giving me tasks to do and no clear direction. So that's when I was sitting in my cube and I decided there has to be a better way. And I started building out systems to be able to really focus on each of those seven companies and batch and get all, everything out that I needed to get out. Mm -hmm. And that's when I built up the foundation of what tiny marketing ended up being. And then um, last year, I decided to take it full time. I was an in-house marketer for 15 years wow. and freelancing on the side. And then last year I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot my shot. And it has, it has been great. I've gotten extremely lucky work with amazing people. Congratulations. Thank you. Actually, this Saturday is my one year anniversary. Oh, wow. so congratulations. <laughs> Now, how, one of the things I'm curious about in marketing is, I mean, here you are, you're working on the computer, you're doing all these digital things, but how are you staying connected? How do you keep your finger on the pulse when everything that you're doing is digital? I mean, this seems like an important part of reciprocity. Do you mean as far as like building relationships and having those opportunities for reciprocity? Well, yes. I can do that digitally. <laughs> A lot of times we connect over like my subscribers in my newsletter, I have conversations with them every single week and it goes straight, their replies go straight to my email. So we have conversations then, we have conversations on social media and sometimes I'll just meet people and we'll meet up for lunch or a coffee and start talking that way. But a lot of times I meet them on LinkedIn or through my email newsletter. I've, uh, that's awesome people in my live stream people well it seems like there. it's an important part too is just the following up on the relationship you're not just putting content out there just letting people enjoying it but there's a second step of back and forth that's really made it successful yeah. for you yeah really just having a one-way thing with your content just putting it out there and that's it'll work in a way but it's not going to work it's not going to work in like a long-term way building relationships with these people that I provide the content to. That's what really actually matters in the end. Now you create things uh, for social media. You also do blog posts, I believe, for some of your customers. Um, yeah. When it comes to blog posts, is is there like a, a generic set of rules that you let the customer know they kind of need to follow so that they can get it up and running properly? Or is that far more complex than that? Mm, do you mean technically or as far as content strategy? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some rule of, rules of thumb that really make a big difference. So formatting, making sure everything is really scannable because most of the time people are scanning your blog posts, making sure that the keywords are positioned just right in the blog post, making sure there's right images, embedded video whenever possible, Technically, I don't like comments, so I usually remove the commentary area because it's usually spam. Uh, but having cool. that share link in there, as far as technical check marks, do that so it's shareable. Um, and then content strategy. I like to always start my relationships with my clients doing a brand messaging session mm -hmm. where we look at their audience the problem that they have and the solution and really clarify the message. And from there, I build out content clusters. So we only talk about these four pillars within their blog. 
and then they become known for those for those things. If you try and talk about everything, then you're known for nothing. Good point. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna quote That's myself. That's awesome. that. in, in the first interview, you talked about it that you know you are a giver. It sounds like even outside of your business that you're a giver. How do you keep yourself from running yourself ragged? I mean, I think a lot of business owners and leaders kind of run into that. You're so passionate that maybe it, yeah. there's a point where you kind of have a dip in energy. Do you have, what do you personally use to handle those moments? Oh, burnout happens for sure. I try and do absolutely nothing, at least one day a week though, where <laughs> don't even look at me. I am out of commission. I am just doing stuff for me today. I think that helps a lot is that I, I take I take that day and I just take every moment that I can. I work out every day at lunch, actually, usually at 12 to one. So like right now, <laughs> and that, that one hour of me time really helps a lot. That's great. Hey, I wish I had a little more me time myself, <laughs> but yeah. somehow times just keep on disappearing. No matter how many times I think, okay, this usually takes two hours. Whoops, it took three or, this took a half hour and I was expecting it to, well, anyway, you get the idea. Do you have any yeah. recommendations as far as how to find a structure? I mean, it sounds like you know enough about systems and processes. What's your recommendation to make sure that we stay on target? Yeah, that actually really excited me when you asked me that question. Did you see my eyes light up? <laughs> so when I'm working, I always put a timer on I, I use Bonsai for all of my client stuff and there is uh -huh. a project timer on there. So I time every project that I do, at least I did it like, at least do it for the first couple of months that you're, that you're trying to build out your systems. Sure. And then you'll have a real honest idea of how long something will take. I actually built out a spreadsheet where I have like the average amount of time it takes me to do something because I like to just block off that time so no one can take it and I can just get on through it. So I'm not familiar with Bonsai. Is that like a, a software thing that records or just a, a separate timer? There is absolutely a million of them available. I use Bonsai because like my proposals, my invoices, my projects are all on that platform. Oh, it's, okay. Um, so you can actually record your hours build and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And they have one in there, so I use that. But there's a million out there that you could use. Yeah, great. Christine, did you have uh, any other thoughts that you wanted to? Because you know, whole... I did, and it. I've been sitting here, and I was like, "Where did that?" I was listening to the bond, the explanation of bonsai. I have been exposed to the timer before. As uh, there's, th like you said, there's a bunch of different apps for ways to approach that, and that's a great way. I wanted to ask you about managing expectations. So when you are in this reciprocal relationship with someone, or you know, do you run into situations where the expectations, you know, just sometimes when we're giving everything that we can, someone might be expecting more or they don't realize that this is kind of where this ends. And so how do you manage those? Yeah, yeah I'm actually dealing with, with that right now. And I feel like clarity from the very beginning is absolutely important. Like if it's, if it's something that's pretty serious where like you're doing an exchange of goods, I would say have a contract clarify exactly what assets or deliverables you're willing to trade for the exact same ones. And um, you have to just be completely clear or you'll ruin that relationship. I, I have a few partnerships that are in the works right now and we're in that clarification stage right now, which is always awkward. Like <laughs> it's, it's awkward, but it's so important. So you guys don't hurt each other in that relationship. Yeah. yeah, and even building, I love the word clarification on it, and just building that in as part of the relationship, I bet, is helpful, too, because we can't always foresee everything at the beginning. Right, exactly, exactly. So if you have, like, a set outline of what to expect on either party, and you guys are comfortable with that, that's a good base. 
Okay. So Sarah, no. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut in. Sorry, CJ, I'm cutting no, in really go quick. Ahead. All right, Sarah, when a, yes. you, so you obviously probably have a schedule of when your next uh, blog post or your next video is posted, correct? Because yeah. I just want to know no. what, what the schedule is so I can be tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that I took a summer break from my live stream show. So we start back up September 10th and it cool. will be every other Thursday at 1130 will be the live stream show. And then the last week of the month, we'll put out a pillar blog post that goes along with the theme. And excellent. then every Tuesday, the newsletter goes out. All right. Um, that's that's <laughs> excellent. Now, before you go, we actually want you to stick around a little bit longer here. Uh, what we tend to do at this point is we talk about youth being leaders and how they can be communicators and leaders both. Uh, and what we have normally done is Marty goes out, he interviews a youth that seems to be moving ahead faster than most. Mm -hmm. And then we wanna get your input on it. Uh, so, so hang tight here. Um, Marty, why don't you introduce who your guest interview is for? All right, with. well, actually this is, this is Excellent. So Sarah, please pay attention because this young girl started her own podcast. She has a uh, deep religious belief and she just feels uh, she's got a calling to motivate others. And again, it's another one of these kids that I just truly enjoyed. And I'm so sorry that the interviews are so short. I want to spend the entire day just chatting with her. So <laughs> CJ, run the video. Hi everyone, uh, this is Marty with Brown Bag in It, my new friend, Claire. Claire is the host of an incredible podcast that I insist that you listen to. The podcast is called Eyeglass on Earth. So Claire, tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us a little brief bio. Um, I'm a high schooler, like any other normal youth kid who is just deep into Christianity and just had a passion for speaking about it and sharing it with my peers and just ran with it. And yeah, my glass on earth right there for you. I, I, I love it. I love the name eyeglass on earth. Could you tell us a little bit about what that actually means? Yeah, so literally eyeglass and earth. So when you think of an eyeglass, mm -hmm. like zooming in and magnifying on our everyday so our problems, our relationships, like Christianity on earth, exactly that. Okay. All right. So what, what motivated you, uh, a young girl to say, I'm just going to go out there and try to help as many people as I can. What motivates you? Um, motivating me is definitely seeing change, like seeing people empowered, whether it's going to a youth camp and seeing these like kids that would just break down because they would have the impacts of Christ on them was just totally like heart changing and like seeing people run with their like just inspires me to like keep going and try and help other people be changed okay all right so so talking about inspiration uh who inspires you what are some of the podcasts or or other uh speakers that you enjoy listening to um well gary v is um incredible you know just like the motivation aspect and just like this guy came okay. and is now going on and just like everyday like pastors and preachers like seeing men and women that are capable of just spreading god's gospel is huge yeah all right wow this is this is incredible i really am enjoying talking to you here uh out of i've listened to a handful of your episodes which is your favorite episode uh what was the message that was most important for you to get out to the world um i think the most important message to get out to the world is the hard to swallow ones like Christianity, something that you have to face head on, and you can't just have it as a side profile in your life. Like when you go into it, like you got to get knee deep. And I think that's super important, but it's also extremely hard to confront. All right. Wow. You are a very uh, deep person. Uh, where, where are we going to see you in the future? What do you think your future holds for you? Um, I mean, a big stage. Hopefully okay. crossing my fingers looks very great. Um, I mean, even if it's something small, just empowering people in general is something I would just love to get into. And just speaking is just incredible. 
Well, I have a funny feeling you're going to get there. And I just want to remind you, leave a couple tickets at the box office for me. All right. That's going to be really important. Uh, I'll, no. I'll Thank you. Thank you. So uh, what would you say? Um, uh, give us a, a, a couple of words of motivation for the youth of the world right now. Um, I think as part of the youth, as I think it's really important to stay true to yourself okay. and to stay true to where you came from and but to grow within that and i think it's very important to grow as a person and i think we can all achieve that and yeah and that's it's cool okay tell us where we can find uh eyeglass on earth um you can find eyeglass on earth anywhere you listen to podcasts spotify apple anywhere literally just type in eyeglass on earth and you're there and just, all right cool cool uh any kind of a sneak preview of what your next uh podcast next episode or is, it, or is this going to be a secret um i mean a little bit of a secret but okay. we're we're, we're going to be progressing with our relationships through christ as youth so it'll be a fun ride all right all right claire again thank you so much for this opportunity to talk with you uh you've gained a big fan here and hopefully we can bring some more fans to you thank you so much for being part of brown bagging it any last words you want to share with us no thank you for having me it, it means a lot thank you so much all right take care thank you so much bye-bye bye-bye wow <clears throat> another good leader you know one of the yeah. things i noticed with her is that she's very niche focused uh, but she yep. knows how, not only how to lead, but how to communicate because she was all about her message. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. how does she get that information to the people? Uh, Sarah, what, what's your take on, on this upcoming leader? Yeah, I, I feel like Gen Z is amazing. They are the biggest, they're having a huge impact and I feel like they care so much more about the big picture than previous generations. So I'm just, I'm proud of that generation. I wish I had something to do with it. I think that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why I, I love interviewing these kids. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. I listen to a bunch of her podcasts first and you get this image in your head. And then when we appear on screen, I'm going, you're just a little girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. <laughs> Such an enormous heart and such incredible messages on her uh, podcast. She's, she's just amazing. Christine, what are yeah. your thoughts? Well, Eyeglass on Earth, wow. I mean, that is such a great title. <laughs> that is, her title alone makes me wanna listen to it. And I loved her explanation of it. I bet this, um, she has a creative side to it that we didn't get to experience in this interview. Uh, that was really very, very creative. And I also, the other thing I was struck by was her just courage and bravery, you know, willing to stand where, and state her opinion. Sometimes we're fence riders and she's not a fence rider at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she owns herself. And that's something that's oh hard to do when you're, when you're younger. You just want to go with, you know, blend in with the crowd. And she said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be right. me. Yeah. You know what, what I think that that's the elusive quality of charisma. You know, every kid is trying to connect and find themselves, but when they own themselves, then they are just instantly attractive to everyone. Yes. So, so Sarah, I, I know, Sarah, you have to get going here, but what I'd really love for you to do in these closing moments, pretend you have a, a, a mini counseling session and she's listening <laughs> on. <laughs> All right. What would you recommend for her to get to her next level? I would say that, well, as far as marketing is going, she's doing the right thing where she said you could find her anywhere at um, Eyeglass on Earth. So website, all of, the, all of the podcast platforms, having that consistent brand across the board is so important when it comes to it. But I would say her next level to get there would be to start building those relationships with other people and getting on other Christian podcasts it's to be able to promote her own podcast and increase her listenership would be a next big step. And I can really see her eventually becoming a coach and a public speaker with the charisma that she has. That's Definitely. great. 
So just, just yeah. Well, one, last, one last thing I wanted. One last thing I wanted to say about her was normally when I'm talking to these kids, we spend some time getting to know each other. She was just like, "Start recording. Just go ahead and start recording." <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. You know, I'm wondering if we should take some of these tips ourselves. I think it's time for Marty to show up on other people's podcasts to talk about brown bagging it. <laughs> it works. There you go. There you go. Uh, so, Sarah, any closing comments before you get running off? I would say that building partnerships and having reciprocity with other even people who would be perceived as your competitors, it's it's a win-win. You build wonderful relationships. You're not gonna be able to take every job. So you can pass along referrals and you end up with good friends in the end too. So reciprocity and building partnerships, is it's insanely important when it comes to building up your business. Sounds Thank good you so to me. Much. Yay! Yeah, nice words. words. Yes. Thank you very much. And where can people get a hold of you? Sarah Noel Block everywhere. <laughs> My name. <laughs> so Sarah Noel Block dot com, et cetera, right? Yep. All social Sarah Noel Block and Sarah Noel Block dot com. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank well, you thank you so very much. much. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Great. Oh, well, I tell you what. This has been fantastic so far, but we're not done. We no. now want to have our book moment, our deep dive into our latest book that we're reading. So here's Christine. Hello, welcome to another deep dive book review with me, Christine Crow. We're moving on to a new book this week. The book is Thank You for Arguing by Jane Heinrichs. And this is an awesome book, a five-star book for me. I, on a one to five star scale, I generally save five stars for books that I underline a lot in. I would go back and read I want on my bookshelf. And this for sure is one of them. I was introduced through to this book through my teenage daughter. It was assigned reading in her AP English class. Hmm, we're giving teenagers a book that says thank you for arguing. Hmm, but this book is about the 3000 year old art of rhetoric and borrows from greats like Aristotle. It has anecdotes from Winston Churchill to Homer Simpson. It is a book that you will go back and refer to often. The first time I went through the book, I went through as an audiobook. And I think there's real value in going through this way because the author is also the narrator of the audiobook. He adds inflection at the right points. I think you get his humor better. As I'm going back and reading it, I appreciate that I had that experience to understand and where he was coming from. So this is not only is a five-star book, but one that's of value to own as an audio book and as a physical book. The art of persuasion, rhetoric, is very valuable for leaders. And this book is full of tools that after you've gone through it, you can easily flip back to and consider, or there is actually a leadership laboratory that was created by one of the fans of the first edition of the book that gives you ways to put the tools that are introduced in this book or reintroduced in this book because it's a 3000 year old art that reintroduce those tools in a way that you can start implementing them in your day. One of those tools I wanna to talk about today is considering the tenses of your argument. For example, if I walk into the kitchen and I'm like, who made this mess? Well, that's past tense. I'm referring to what's happened in the past. And past tense usually has to do with blaming, not always effective when you're trying to change how people are going to, to come into agreement with what you're trying to introduce as a leader. Another tense is present tense. And in the present tense, usually you're introducing value. We are 
people who show up. We are, so these are present tense that are introducing values. And there's a good place in persuading where present tense takes place. But extremely effective when you're introducing choice is changing your rhetoric so that it is future tense when you're introducing choice. So instead of going in the kitchen and saying, hey, who made this mess? I might say, let's try to all clean up after ourselves when we make a mess. So that future tense is introducing a choice. It's not putting anybody in a defensive position and I, obviously you're going to use this in different ways <laughs> in our businesses uh, when you're dealing with people, but consider the tenses moving forward. So using past tense, tends to have blame, present tense for introducing values, but definitely when you're introducing choices and you're looking to persuade your audience to be in agreement with what you're saying, then consider future tense. I look forward to more reviews on thank you for arguing in the coming week. Thank you, Christine. Yes. Yeah, Excellent. that's a definitely a great book to run out and grab. <laughs> right. Well, I really I really like the the part about the the present tense because for me, you know, I've been in a situation, you know, whether it's a roommate situation or a bunch of people in an organization you're working with somebody's dropped the ball somewhere and the moment you ask about the dropped ball mm -hmm. you have negative connotations not only for the person who feels like an idiot because they did drop the ball but everyone watching is seeing that oh maybe this guy isn't a safe leader but if you talk in a present tense about hey i noticed this needs to be taken care of right away which one of us can help move this forward so we can get to where we need to get within the next X number of minutes or whatever. Uh, now, suddenly, we don't really care who it was that caused the problem. What we care about is we need the solution to be present. Right, exactly. Good wrap up, yes. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I just felt like I heard the book review twice. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I guess I paid attention then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good. All this, all this giving you're doing, CJ. Uh, I just feel like I have to give you something back. So if it's nothing more than a little pain, that'll do it. <laughs> well, you are right about one thing. Time is short, and <laughs> so it might have been a wrap up with me subconsciously doing it. Uh, but our time is up, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was great to uh, learn about Sarah Newell. And I think that if anybody has a small business, contacting Tiny Marketing is a great step. Yes. Sarah Newell Black uh, is the way to get a hold of her, whether it's sarahnewellblack.com or whatever social media you use, she's there, hunt her down. Uh, Christine, any closing comments? Well, I would just say we've been talking a few weeks about using persuasion in your leadership. It is definitely something that is valuable to there. I didn't realize until we got so involved in this that there is so much out there about persuasion techniques. And it's definitely valuable for moving your business forward to consider these things. And this week in talking about reciprocity, I just hope I'm curious what creative ideas people will come up with and hope that they will share them with us about how they're able to move forward or how reciprocity has worked in their success so that we can all grow from their experience. Sounds great. great. Marty, your thoughts. Um, the whole idea of reciprocity reminds me of a closing technique in sales. It's the Benjamin Franklin closing technique, which is all about giving something to someone else first, and then they are more apt to help you because they're, they are kind of in your favor or they're feeling positive about it because you're not asking for anything in return. I've always liked that approach. And then listening to someone like Sarah just really drives home the idea that it truly works because she does give so much information that it uh, it makes me want to talk to her even more and learn something more from her. Yeah, it's amazing to me when you're not stingy, when you're actually freely giving and you're generous, people tend to want to work with people of that nature because generosity just 
seems to drive great attitude. But our time is up. Next week, we're going to start in on a four-week session about creativity and different aspects right. about that. So we hope Excellent. that you'll join us then. And until that time, we'll say bye-bye for now. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>